Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 2J, where we're going to talk about mutagens, agents that increase the frequency of mutation above the background rate. These chemicals and radiation, that's what they mostly are, usually act by damaging DNA, and the damage then causes DNA polymerase to make mistakes that it wouldn't otherwise make. We'll work in detail, detail through one example, that of ultraviolet radiation. Now, we can divide the causes of mutation in various ways, but one way is to think of them as either bad luck or mutagens. So factors that we consider bad luck would be events that are both unpredictable and uncontrollable. Things like random shifts in the structures of the molecules. For instance, many of the mistakes that DNA polymerase makes occur because the bases shift their chemical conformation unpredictably. There's also the fact that our cells are full of very reactive chemicals generated as byproducts of normal cellular metabolism. And these reactive chemicals can react with our DNA. We're also subject to bombardment, constant bombardment with cosmic rays and other background radiation, all of which can cause mutations, but we have no control over. In contrast, mutagens are factors that increase the chance of a mutation above the background caused by bad luck. And this includes primarily radiation, above background radiation, and chemical mutagens, chemicals that we're not necessarily constantly exposed to, but they may be natural chemicals or unnatural ones. Now, the first of these, the chance shift in molecular structures, is the kind of event that causes polymerase errors. All of the other kinds of causes of mutations that I've listed here act by increasing DNA damage. So the chance shifts in molecular structures are largely transient back and forth. The molecule shifts, then shifts back. All of these other factors cause permanent damage to the DNA, to the changes to the physical structure of the DNA molecule. And this damage increases the likelihood that a mutation will then occur. So what is this DNA damage stuff? Really, we use the term DNA damage to refer to any chemical change from the standard physical structure of DNA. So damage includes such things as the oxidation of a base, shown here as a little green dot. The base has changed its chemical structure slightly because one of its bonds has become oxidized. And this can affect its ability, for instance, to form base pairs. Another category is what are called bulky adducts. These are larger chemical changes where a group such as an ethyl group or a methyl group becomes bound to the base pair, to the base. Um, a different kind is damages that are breaks, indicated here by a gap in the DNA backbone where the bases haven't been changed but the covalent connection between one base and the next has been destroyed. The opposite of breaks are crosslinks, bonds that form where bonds should not be, and there are two kinds. First, we can think of crosslinks between adjacent bases. The backbone's still intact, but the bases are covalently joined to each other. The other kind is crosslinking between strands. Here, the, a chemical change has occurred that actually ties the two strands together. So the strands can't even come apart to be replicated. All of these kinds of damage can cause mutations either directly or as a consequence of the cell's efforts to repair them. It's important for the cell to repair them because many of these forms of damage prevent DNA replication, and so they'd otherwise kill the cell. Now, I'm going to go through one example in detail because this is a mutagen that we're all exposed to every day unless we live in the basement and we never go out. And that's ultraviolet light. We're exposed to lots of it if we go out in the sun. So ultraviolet light is a form of radiation, part of the radiation from the sun. 
It's the radiation that induces the browning reaction in our skin that we call a suntan. So when ultraviolet light interacts with DNA, and much of ultraviolet light actually penetrates through the surface of our skin into the cells in our skin, um, the ultraviolet light has a level of energy that lets it do what chemists call resonate with thymine bases and um, cytosine bases, but especially thymine bases in our DNA. And the ultraviolet light transfers some energy to the thymine bases. And this excess energy can cause two thymine bases to form a covalent bond. This is an example of an interbase crosslink. There's now a chemical bond joining these two T's together. I've drawn one example here in double-stranded DNA and another example here in single-stranded DNA illustrated as part of the structure we call a replication fork. So when DNA polymerase encounters this sort of DNA damage, it cannot replicate it. It just stops, says, no, this is not something I can handle. I can't make base pairs on when the bases are covalently bound to each other. And this is very serious for the cell because if the cell can't replicate its DNA, it's going to die. So rather than just give up, cells have evolved solutions to this impasse. And that is, rather than relying on normal DNA polymerase to replicate damage, if DNA normal DNA polymerase won't do it, the so cell calls in a different kind of polymerase called an error-prone DNA polymerase. It's much less fussy than normal DNA polymerase. And it'll use damaged DNA as a template, no problem. Keeps on going, can't figure out what basis to put in, it just puts in anything. That's why it's called an error-prone polymerase, because it often puts in the wrong basis. However, from the cell's point of view, it's much better to risk having a couple of wrong bases and get the DNA replicated, because the cell's going to survive, and probably the mutations won't do any harm. Sometimes they will, but probably they won't. Now, here's a question. Chemotherapy, the chemicals that are used for chemotherapy, are basically DNA damaging agents. And they kill cancer cells because the cancer cells are growing faster than other cells, and so they're more sensitive to DNA damage. Do you think that chemotherapy also causes mutations? Is chemotherapy mutagenic? And the answers are, well, yes, DNA damage caused by chemotherapy will certainly cause mutations, both because some of the DNA damage directly causes replication errors, and because other DNA damage blocks replication entirely, and this will call in the error-prone DNA polymerase, which will make more errors. Now, I want to mention one more mutagen in our environment, and this is geneticists. Geneticists, one of our very powerful tools, is the ability to create specific directed mutations in the organisms that we want to study, and now also to create mutations that increase the value to other humans of certain crops. And so we'll talk about this in Module 9 when we talk about genetically modified organisms. Now, what we've done, we've defined mutagen, something that increases the mutation rate above the baseline. We've considered different types of mutagens, that they act by damaging DNA. We've talked about different kinds of DNA damage. And we've done a detailed analysis of how sunbathing causes mutations. Coming up next, we're going to ask, well, given all these things that cause mutations, what should we actually worry about? I hope to see you there.